Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. Two people reached out to our whistleblower hotline after a woman closed her business in Fargo and filed bankruptcy, but then opened the same business in Moorhead, adding the woman had a laundry list of lawsuits against her, totaling to over a quarter of a million dollars. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley talked with victims who lost a lot of money and say they're afraid she's never going to stop. Before a high-end olive oil bistro found its home here in Moorhead, it was located across the river in Fargo, as well as in Champlin, Minnesota. But prior to that, owner Christine Conrad operated Berry Kebabs, serving fruit on a stick for customers at state fairs, but also offering catering services. And Chelsea Cole decided that would be the perfect fit for her July 2011 wedding, signing a contract with Berry Kebabs and paying $1,500 up front. I walked in, saw that she wasn't there, and I remember um, touching eyes with my mother-in-law and she mouthed the words she did not show. And I went, what the heck? Cole says she tried calling and texting owner Christine Conrad for the rest of her wedding night with no answer or reasons why. I feel sorry for anybody that's been affected by her wrong actions. Prompting Cole to send this email a few days later, threatening legal action if Conrad didn't respond. Have you ever heard back from Christine? I have never. She has never reached out. In this suit filed in October 2012, a judge ordered the kebab owner to pay Cole a little over $2,000, money Cole says she's never seen. I was hoping, my best hope was to get something back from her, but um, at this point, I have not received anything. Conrad filed for bankruptcy in May 2012, and court documents say while officials from Ally Financial were trying to repossess her vehicle, Conrad had sold it on Craigslist for 28000 bucks to Richard Jacoby. We realized the title was no good, and then it just turned into lies and stories and dragging your feet and broken promises and always a reason or an excuse why things weren't adding up. Jacoby's new ride was soon taken back, and a lawsuit from both Jacoby as well as Ally Financial followed. And I gave her a chance. I said, hey, you know, you got a month to figure it out, blah, blah, blah. And then 30, 60, 90, 120 days came, never seen a dollar. A judge ordered Conrad to pay almost $90,000 between the two parties. But that's cash Jacoby says he doesn't think he'll ever see. I mean, she just totally took the man of an innocent person and took off from there and just does not truly care. A federal judge later denied Conrad's 2012 bankruptcy filing, an act one legal expert says she doesn't see often. Very, very rare. Um, it is, in, if they're denied, there's typically allegations of fraud, misrepresentation, um, inaccurate documents. Multiple people, businesses, and building owners have since filed suits against Conrad, with judges in both North Dakota and Minnesota ordering the business owner to pay fees totaling around $190,000 for unpaid services and products, as well as outstanding rent. Judgments are easy to get, but hard to enforce. Um, judgments um, just have to show that the debt's owed. Um, typically, debtors don't respond. Before officially closing her Champlin Bistro, Conrad opened Reese and Riley's in Fargo in September 2017. And Conrad applied for a wine and beer license for that new bistro three times with three different people's names. If you have a felony, you're, you're not allowed to have a liquor license. Do I have a motion to uh, deny the application? Well, we saw this last month um, and denied the, the uh, motion to issue the license uh, to the applicant. Well, the received an, a second applicant from a partner. So it's my understanding that a liquor license can be only denied based on a felony charge conviction. So why would this be denied? It, this is very serious. Uh, first of all, November 2016 domestic violence, he pled guilty. 2017 simple, simple assault, I received 30 days in jail and all suspended and a $400 fine. That's very serious. And the last one is September 2012, criminal, criminal trespass. Those are very serious. The Liquor Control Board denying her first request due to her felony theft charges and her brother's disorderly conduct and simple assault convictions. This is the third time that they've applied uh, with a different person on there. I guess uh, 
I'm not I'm not seeing why we would approve this when the other two people are still on the application that we said no to. Conrad's business was finally approved in October 2017, but then this suit was filed that December, demanding Conrad pay almost $50,000 in unpaid rent and be evicted just six months after opening. I think there's no end to this lady. I don't think if somebody doesn't get a control on it, you know, if the government doesn't step in or the IRS or anybody, this woman's going to continue to do it. She's never going to stop. Conrad then filed a second bankruptcy in October 2018, just one month before opening this bistro in Moorhead. I would not consider this a normal case at all. But that bankruptcy is still pending as the Department of Justice has now stepped in, calling for more time to investigate, quote, serious allegations. Court documents indicate that the DOJ received information that Conrad has, quote, substantial assets which were not listed and that Conrad did not disclose transfers of assets. And these extensions are pretty common. However, one like this is pretty serious. If she's bringing in corporate assets from another entity or her own assets that should have been disclosed in the bankruptcy and they were being transferred into this new entity, that's a problem. In Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. We reached out to Conrad multiple times, and in one brief phone call yesterday evening, Conrad denied all allegations but did not go into any further details. Conrad also declined to speak on camera but told our reporter that she would meet to have a recorded interview. However, after attempts to set that interview up, Conrad did not return our calls. If there's a story that you think needs to be investigated, call our whistleblower hotline and we'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Call 237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Our concerns over the wind and blowing snow have been replaced with frigid temperatures, and frigid they will be. Let's find out how cold it's going to get tonight. Hutch? Yeah, it's going to be brutally cold, and even though the wind is really settled down because it will be so cold, even a little wind will drive those wind chills to ridiculous values. You're looking at our Dakota Magic Casino cab at a beautiful setting sun. We can't judge a book by its cover. Today, we saw winds that peaked at 51 miles per hour during the peak of the blizzard overnight in Fargo and in Crookston. And Grand Forks, your peak gust of 56 occurred about 11 o'clock last night. So some very gusty winds and blowing snow. Those winds are settling down. Actual air temperatures are 18 below in Faustin, 15 below in Langdon, Grand Forks 11 below zero. Right now, wind chills are approaching 30 below to 35 below in many areas. So dangerously cold throughout the overnight and first thing in the morning. The cold air sticks around. I'll have details on how long here in just a bit. And it's going to get cold. It, it is, yes. Thanks. Mm -hmm. The Grand Forks Police Department is still searching for a sex offender who failed to register with police. 32-year-old Jordan Eno is wanted by the department. Authorities believe he is either in Grand Forks or Fargo. Anyone with information about him is urged to call police. A man who works at a daycare in Grand Forks is under investigation after allegations that he sexually assaulted a child. Last week, parents got a letter saying an employee at Little Miracles Daycare is under assessment surrounding the accusations. Another employee says this man has been in contact with children and wasn't put on leave until Tuesday. It's not being taken seriously by the daycare. So then, you know, who knows if, if something did happen, then our kids are continued to be placed at risk while this all plays out, and I don't, I don't think that's okay. Grand Forks County Social Services says it's up to the employer if the person should be put on leave before the assessment is over. The owner of Little Miracles said their number one, employ, uh, one, number one priority is the safety and the well-being of every child. A bill that would prevent people convicted of animal cruelty from buying or adopting another animal is getting a do not pass recommendation to North Dakota's House floor. The bill's sponsor, Grand Forks Representative Mary Adams, says the intent was to mainly add a roadblock to prevent animals like cats and dogs from getting into the hands of abusers. However, opponents say the bill's language is too broad and there's no definition as to which animals it would cover, adding that it could impact animal agriculture. Those against the bill say if those specifics are added, they would be willing to look at it again. 
A plan to fight tobacco addiction for Minnesotans, especially youth, has surfaced among a bipartisan group of lawmakers. According to Minnesotans for a Smoke-Free Generation, three bills are being presented to help strengthen Minnesota with regard to tobacco use. The bills would respect, uh, respectfully uh, strengthen Minnesota's air law, provide help to Minnesotans to quit smoking and raise the minimum tobacco age to 21. Tobacco is one of the leading causes of preventable death and disease for Minnesotans, and the organization claims costs $7 billion annually and takes more than 6,300 lives in the state every year. Courage, dedication, and passion are all qualities that the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation says defines true American heroes. That's why Fargo graduate and veteran astronaut James Buckley will be inducted into the United States Astronaut Hall of Fame. Buckley is an accomplished fighter pilot who dedicated 25 years to military service and became an astronaut in 1979. His career includes over 4,200 hours of flying time and four space flights that included orbiting the Earth 319 times, traveling over 7 million miles in 20 days, 10 hours, 25 minutes, and 32 seconds. Buckley says this honor reminds him of the space programs that have led him to where he is today. It's being part of a small group of people who've gone into space. And I think people have said before, programs before allow us you know, to move ahead on the shoulders of giants who've been there. Buckley's induction to the Hall of Fame is on April 6th at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex in Florida.